Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth and final round of the 2018 Memorial Championships presented by Discraft. Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, here along with four-time world champion Valerie Jenkins. And Val, thanks again, first and foremost, for joining us. And we're about to see this thing wrap up four rounds. It's a long week for everyone. It is, and at the start of the season, it's a lot of golf for these players, but I'm excited to get a little change of scenery. We're on a new course, so I'm excited to do the commentary over at Vista. Should be good. We've seen two rounds at Fountain. We've seen one round at Vista, and our fourth round here. Question is, who's the pro tour partner? Hmm, that's pretty fitting. Here she goes, yep. the queen of dynamic discs, Paige Pierce. And just lacing it right up the middle. No nerves. She's got a comfortable lead of seven strokes at the moment, but just putting it right up the middle. I don't know if there weren't any nerves, because it's still <laughs> this triple mando here, and as you just saw, Jen missed it. And, you know, the start of any, any round, the first hole, that first tee, there are some nerves going, but... You just have to figure out a way just to dial it in, focus on the shot you want to throw, and Jessica did a great shot right there. And Lisa keeping it low. She's going to get a little bit of a skip there. You're right. There's got to be nerves, even with a seven-stroke advantage, but somehow Paige finds a way to get it dialed in. And Jen's going to double-check as to what the play is on the mandatory. She missed it, and so she confirms with the T-sign and the rules that she's gonna in fact be re-teeing here. Are you more nervous now that you've already missed the Mando once when you got a re-tee there? Oh, maybe, and maybe she over-adjusted there. Uh, it's a really weird distance for me, especially uh, 284 feet. That's kind of a between a mid-range and a fairway driver. You know, I wanna throw a fairway driver pretty lightly. You can see Jen just crushed it past, and I'm sure she threw a I think it's a I think it's a fairway driver, which that surprises me. Yeah, she I think went with a driver at first and then back down to a, a uh, mid range and still went deep, if I recall. But Paige here is looking at the lone birdie on hole one if she can convert. That was very nice. Yep, you can tell the focus is on. You're gonna see a lot of birdie opportunities up this first nine and. This one is probably the shortest hole of all of them. So that's, you know, you want to start off shooting a birdie. Just barely squeaking that one in. Maybe first hole jitters, trying to get that first putt out of the way. And Jen, she's going to fall a few back. She was seven behind Paige going into this. And that's going to be a double bogey ultimately. And that's going to give away three strokes and off to a rough start. And yeah, that's not what you want to do. I know Jen's eyes are, you know, we're on the prize when she's stepping up on that tee box. And unfortunately, she gave a few strokes away there, but plenty of golf left. Paige opens up to an eight stroke advantage and that looks like a little bit of a misfire right out of her hand. But still safe. I don't think there's uh, any OB that come into play on this one. Is there, Terry? Maybe just over that fence? Uh, I believe just over the fence. I don't think, if you if there is any OB to the left, it must be way left. And Jessica going with a forehand here. 369 feet. We saw Jen Allen two rounds ago here basically park this shot. And right now she's going to need all the help she can get, possibly follow that up. She wants to keep pace with Paige. Yeah, maybe releasing a little anger here. She wants to get that close. She wants to putt, and that is a park job right there. That's a beautiful crush. Really playing that right side to hill is a, is a great way to do it, and Paige drawing metal from way downtown. I think that was like Old Town Scottsdale where she was throwing from. Oh, let's see. I know uh, Lisa has hit millions of these putts and she is a great jump putter just like Paige I mean with when she's in that distant I'm actually surprised she didn't jump putt that's not a normal Lisa Fakus I, I thought she was kind of going back and forth I think she was undecided and then ultimately kind of gave it a run and just inside the circle is Jessica though that's a great birdie here first one of the day for her
Lisa, very, very methodical. You'll always see her with a little bit of a wiggle. She definitely uh, goes through her routine. I know you talked about that as Jen Allen puts in her park job. You talked about that with Sarah Holcomb a couple rounds ago, that going through your routine is so crucial, even on the shorter putts. And Lisa is, uh, she very much exemplifies that exact idea. Absolutely. Paige still sitting with seven strokes over second, and I believe that's nine strokes over Jen in third. Four. That one actually kind of tricked everybody. It turned over on us, went over to the left. You can find OB over there. She's going to be safe, though. That's interesting. She probably threw something that was a little more understable to get that distance. Again, a 360-foot shot. Jen knows how to dial in those 360-foot shots, so that was another great cross by her. Would you think that maybe Jessica went forehand here to try and take the OB culvert out of play? Is that what you think would be the reasoning? Hmm, I, probably not that. I would say these trees that are off to the right, um, you really have to either what Paige just did or you go wide and around like Jen did. Um, but I, go, I usually get... Sn like, I would snag up on that tree on the right, and that's what has caused me to land maybe in that little culvert or just land short. I can't really get the distance. But, you know, Jessica's got a crush, so that was a good choice, I think. She's about 80 feet out, and that's got really good height to it, just a little bit on the right side. And I know we've talked about it throughout the last few rounds that there's been very little wind to speak of. And, ah, <laughs> There's at least a fake jump putt right there. Oh, and Jen's going to let one go there. I know she's been working on her putting stroke a little bit. She's uh, talked about getting it changed up, and unfortunately, that's a relatively short one that she's going to wish she had back. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I hear Jen talking about her putt a lot, and, uh, you know, for some players, the, the more you think about it and the more you work on it, the more it gets in your head and sometimes you just can't change that maybe it's the mental side you need to change instead um i don't know it's it's tough because she could throw so far so you know she's got that advantage at least put it right under the basket that makes it easier yeah you could do what Paige has done here take essentially take the putting out of the equation and that's where she's throwing her drive gives it the little flip as you always see and Easy birdie for Paige Pierce. That's two of them in the first three holes. That was awesome. It sounds like Paige's entourage is following her around this round. You can hear the cheers and the screaming. That's good. I have seen a lot of um, a gallery come out for the ladies that are playing in the morning, so that's really great to see. Yeah, aside from all the advantages with the footage getting spliced in and into the live afternoon round, having, what a great run, having Paige and, uh, I'm sorry, having all of the women teeing a little earlier gives everyone an opportunity to say, hey, I want to go watch the lead card live, and then I can also watch the MPO lead card live as well later. Uh, it, it, I think it works out well for the scheduling. Exactly, yep, making a day of it. Wow, <laughs> you can see Jen, she did an uh, unintentional 360, I believe, after her throw. I didn't see it land, Terry, how'd that one turn out? Uh, I think she put herself up on the green and we saw Jessica Weiss's turn over. Uh, she went with the backhand and hers had turned over as well. Meanwhile, Lisa's short and left. And Jessica is actually OB and in that tree, or should I say two meters OB up in the tree so that was her for a three and she left herself a little bit short mm. yeah that's probably not something that Jessica imagined would happen uh, you know, there's not too many trees out here and they're not as thick as uh, some of the trees out on the east coast and uh, yeah that's unfortunate for her to go OB right there with all the OB surrounding this basket right here and her putt for bogey comes up short. Just not enough power on really the approach or the putt there. And that's not something she was counting on walking away with a double bogey. Meanwhile, Jen has a relatively short putt. That was probably no longer than the previous putt for birdie, but this one she cleans up for the par. And Paige says, oh, I'm just, uh, you know, 12, 14 feet away, if even. 
No big deal, another birdie. 381 feet, and she just had a drop-in putt. That's, it's incredible. I mean, I've seen this girl play for years and years, and I'm still so impressed by how far she can drive. It's incredible. She makes it look effortless. I think that's the really impressive thing. It's one thing to see, you know, somebody get a pump a drive out there and they've given it everything. When Paige is fluid and she's throwing like she can, 380 is really no big deal to her. Mm-hmm. Here we go. 340 foot hole right here to an elevated basket. So that makes it tricky. And that's about as good as it gets right there that's you're looking good you know you want to be close to the basket as you can there is a mandatory tree which is why you're seeing them go a little bit straighter a lot of players used to be able to go out and wide play a big hyzer and a couple of years ago they implemented that tree on the right as a mandatory so that's why you're seeing players go straight and lisa's gonna head toward the tree and then skip out of it and i really like that play she just needed a little bit more distance yeah, that is a that is a change up from the recent years. I remember when that tree was much smaller and it was a lot easier to throw out right and around it. So this does force players to throw the straight shot. And as you can see, just through a slightly understable disc and it didn't come back as much as she had hoped, but still looks like she's close to the circle, if not inside. Yeah, that is a great play. Uh, and I think that goes to speak about playing when the wind is there or it's not if you have to play that right to left or a, a left to right wind or whatever the case might be there's no wind in this case so she could turn something over very easily and let the disc do the work hmm. yeah so you see Paige is close enough to actually go for the putt i feel like you gotta be inside the circle a few feet like jess is to even attempt this basket if you're gonna go long you don't want to be going from 85 feet putting at this basket and still ending up, you know, 30 feet or something on the other side. You want to be close for your par putt. Get that putt in. Walk away. It's the final round. You want to say goodbye to these elevated baskets for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw in round two, Paige had a 30-footer. She airballed it, went deep at least 30 feet, and then made the comebacker. Uh, with no problem. So it talks a little bit about her confidence as I think we're going to see the uh, slam dunk by Fake S. I love it. <laughs> Double handed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, stuffing it in the basket there. That's a full fledged slam dunk by Fake S. So, again, Paige, though, still has uh, this 11 stroke advantage. It looks like she's on cruise control at the moment. Is there enough holes for uh, somebody to catch up to her? Oh, this it's a game of golf, so there's every opportunity to catch up to somebody. And there's plenty of OB out on this course, not only in the lined OB or over a fence, but there's plenty of water in the, the back nine that could get somebody in trouble, especially if, you know, they might let up on the gas and they're not thinking clearly. So you never know what's going to happen. I always say you never know until that last putt drops into the basket. Unless you do have a 12-stroke lead, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great play. I love just getting out to the middle of the fairway. It doesn't really benefit you to get the extra 30 or 40 or 50 feet to try anything too crazy. And I love where Lisa landed. I love where we're seeing Jessica land, just putting herself way out in the open. Really probably going to be looking to play this hole 4 of 4. And I think if you commit to that early... Uh, you should have no problems doing it. It's when you're trying to bite off more than you can, as we see a huge turnover there by Jen. But that I love the play, play for four. Yeah, that was a great play by Jen. Uh, I don't typically land that far left, but it allows you to have the bigger opportunity to throw any shot you want to. She had to throw the Anheuser, I believe. There was a tree in the way, but you just saw uh, Lisa right there. She threw a nice straight shot. Jess has plenty of room. Hopefully this stays in bounds for her. And she gets a great skip. Yep, that'll that'll be a nice, easy upshot for her. Now, I believe it was your husband who talked about being on this right side, and we're watching Paige throw her, you know, low skip shot. And he talked both days about how when you're on that right side, 
that right side OB just kind of creeps into your mind a little bit. It really shouldn't, but it can. And you got to make sure you have the good angle on it. And Paige had a great angle to keep it low and get the skip. So I really like how she did that. Yeah, and that's typically where I would land. I throw that same drive as Paige and maybe not as long, but it is a lower ceiling over there, so it makes it harder to throw quite as far to get close enough to the basket, but it is a par four, so you want to you want to play the shots that you know you can hit. Not going OB is, is the biggest issue here. It's pretty much textbook by Jessica right there. Exactly, and Paige still has a look at Birdie. <laughs> Uh, and send it? Thank the kids you, still say Black that? Ink Discs. <laughs> These walls are interesting. Uh, I feel like that they are in some particular places where they keep players in bounds, and no need to worry about that because Lisa just hits the basket. So, <laughs> But players are able to use this as a backdrop in some of these cases, which I don't know. Maybe in other circumstances, uh, you know, we would have gone OB. And what wow. concentration. Yeah, not that was just a, that was a great putt in itself, but right before she putt, you heard a dog bark and Paige putted right through it, maintained that concentration and uh, was able to still walk away with the par. Looks like everybody's setting up for pars. Jen's going to wait on a really brief uh, interruption of sorts or distraction. See the little double G in the background, Garrett Gerthy back out on tour this year. Great to see. He's traveling around with Jess. Nice. Yeah, it's great to have him back out on tour. He's one of the kids that grew up in the sport just like Jessica did, just like I did. And, uh, yeah, it's great to see him back out playing. These are the people that are veterans in the sport, even though they're so young in age. So just the next generation of players. The Dynamic Disc Recruit is a tournament quality basket at a practice level price. The Recruit is the ultimate basket for backyard practice or temporary courses. Get ready for tournaments. Get better. Get the Recruit. And again, thanks to Dynamic Disc for supporting the Disc Golf Pro Tour and specifically for supporting this women's post-production coverage here in rounds three and four. And hole number seven, 645 feet. What's everyone trying to do here? Uh, throw a crush like that. <laughs> this is one of my favorite holes. I, I don't know what it is about it, but it's one of the par fours that I feel like I can get a three on. I could birdie this hole if I throw the perfect shots that I want to throw. 645 feet, so it's two big shots and a, and a solid putt right right there. But, yeah, I don't. there's something about just the, the shape of this hole that I really like. It definitely sets up to an advantage for a righty. Uh, as you're able just to throw it out to the middle, you really don't want to push that left side too hard. Otherwise, some of those trees can come into play. But as long as you find somewhere near the center of the fairway, it's a relatively easy straight shot that just needs to finish toward the elevated basket. And Lisa, maybe not quite enough power there. Yeah, this this should be in the wheelhouse for Jess and pa sorry Jen and Paige. Let's see if Jess can get up there. That is oh, yeah. a perfect shot. That's what you want. Yeah, I love these par fours that are reachable for the ladies. I'm glad that they left this one in this basket placement. Get around it. Come back. And Jen giving it too much and going over the OB sidewalk. She'll get to take it from there, but with a penalty. And Paige with just a little, you know, putter, mid-range uh, action there. One of the two. <laughs> I mean, when you throw that far, it makes the upshots a lot shorter. I'm so interested in that misfire by Jen. I mean, that is a crush way past the basket. Um, I don't even know how far past the basket it is, but yeah, the sidewalk comes into play on that upshot, but not as much as you would think. I don't know if there's a game of Connect Four that's being played here. You see all four of those putters right in a row all lined up uh, and Paige we've got to talk a little bit about she put her drive about five feet closer uh, during her second shot on uh, 
the Thursday's round. So she's got this hole dialed in, just a huge drive, a perfect approach, and right next to the pin, and she takes a birdie, and Lisa's going to settle for the par. I thought she was going to throw another slam dunk in there I for a second. I was waiting for it. I was so excited. <laughs> she's we're trying to make to that her... her signature. She's dialing it in. <laughs> what we're going to have to do is like the NBA dunk contest. You and I are going to have to sit here with uh, numbers and then raise them up. All right, we've got Paige, and I've got to say that's a an almost an exact duplicate of the mistake she made two days ago, which is she turned over her putter and hit probably almost the exact same branch and fell OB again into the water, and I love the line here by Jessica. That was really nice. Yeah, for Paige to pull out a putter, it's 360 feet. It is downhill. But I always feel like the wind comes into play on this shot. Uh, typically a headwind, which makes it tough because you want to land to the right. So you want to throw kind of an understable disc if you're throwing backhand or for Jessica, maybe a, a forehand. But yeah, it's, it's a really tricky little shot. So uh, this, this view isn't giving us everything that it's got. Uh, I always get a heart attack when I have to walk up the hill and, and throw this drive. Hopefully I'm not throwing my favorite disc at that moment. I've said a few times, this is one of my favorite holes on the course. Uh, Rick getting the catch camera action instead of the throw this time, giving everyone a little bit different look. What do you think of the safe play out to the right, as you just saw from Lisa, basically laying this up and really just playing this hole for a three? It works, but I've never thrown it. Mm. I've seen a lot of players play that. Um, it's, it's a weird angle from the tee. You'll see there's a huge palm tree up where we're teeing at and I think you have to I'm not sure around it or in front of it but it, it is a safe three I uh, I like to go for the birdie though on this one because it's reachable you're up on a little elevated tee box and yeah just like that you got a bonus birdie and you're walking away smiling as you're going into the back great birdie by Weiss 360 this place probably closer to about 320 maybe 330 you're looking at about 310 or so to get over the water uh, effectively. And uh, the the risk reward paid off for Weiss with the birdie. I love it. We're moving on to one of the, well, I'll say the last hole here, of course, on the front nine, hole number nine. This does have a different tee, and we've seen a few different angles uh, when the women have been playing from this tee this week. Yes, this is a, a different tee, a different look at the basket. And uh, I, I think I like it. Typically, we're throwing from the longer tee and laying up to that kind of crooked tree we see right there, zooming in on, and still have that low shot that they're throwing right now from the tee box. So I'm glad that it's a little bit shorter. Give us a chance to birdie it. But this was another one that I love getting a three on. and, and But still, it's a, it's a par three, so you didn't... You weren't gaining any strokes, typically. And Pierce says, I'm not going to mess with the water's edge on the left side. I'm going to go big hyzer. She threw a great shot two rounds ago and another good one here, this time a little bit shorter. And I love that even though there is a shorter tee here, the sidewalk on the right still can be out of bounds. The, Of course, the water on the left is still out of bounds, so there's still plenty of danger Dang. Wow, there it is again. Lisa's got that putt dialed in. Those big putts, you can never count her out. And, yep, that was a beautiful birdie. And Paige, just inside the circle, says yeah. she'll answer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like that play that Paige did. I wish I could throw that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, she's able to get the distance, whereas the other players had to throw that line drive up the fairway so it's tough to get enough power and enough height to make it carry so Paige kind of took that out of play through the big sky hyzer kind of brought the water into play a little bit more but it paid off it sure does well thank you again for joining here during the final round that was the front nine we look forward to having you join us in the back it's going to be tough to hunt down Paige she's got a 10 stroke advantage we'll see you then hey Nate Doss here People ask all the time, what are your three favorite discs? I'm here to show you. 
First, my putter, a Discraft Nate Doss Rubber Blend Challenger. Awesome putter. Mid-range, gotta be the Buzz. This is a Tour Series Nate Doss Buzz. And third but not least, a driver, a Z-Force. Now, it might not be for everybody. If you got some arm speed, you're young, you're ready to go, Z-Force is just for you. Head out to your local retailer, pick one up, check them out. I know you're gonna love them.